Good evening. Welcome to Healthline. I am Gregory Zarian. And I'm Suzanne Watley. And you know, the new school year is upon us already. And right I've got here. Right. I've got two little ones uh, in school. Well, they're not so little anymore. In fact, my oldest one has just started junior high, seventh grade. So she's gone from that little protective nest type of environment of elementary school into a new, bigger environment where you have to change classes. Okay, that's and you got why you're white knuckling it, Susan. <laughs> I have been like this on her behalf. But uh, it's very exciting. It I mean, you exciting. remember what I, it was like when you started uh, a new school year? I do remember. I do remember um, coming face to face with the girls that I had crushes on. I remember I'm um, hoping for the right class and I also remember coming face to face with uh, the bullies that mm. scared the heck out of me because being an identical twin I was made fun of all the time. No we kidding. had bull haircuts, mom and dad got us matching Hawaiian. It, you know what? Everything you hear, I can't discuss it. Everything you hear about it was traumatic. But the beautiful part of all of that is when kids bully you and they make fun of you they don't realize then that they're going to get older and for all of you that made fun of me that don't have hair that have big guts i win so school is here peer pressure fear crushes it's all in front of us and we also get stressed and we also lose focus on what's important time management everything we are here to help you navigate all the stress and drama with going back to school and we got down on one knee and we begged and we pleaded and we got two we of did. our favorite Favorites. guests to come back on the show and uh, they are dr heather banus she's an associate an assistant adjunct professor so good. at occidental college and also suzette bray she's a marriage and family therapist and executive director at Village Counseling and Wellness. In Burbank. Welcome back. Thank you so Thank much. You. Really good to be here. You know how much we both love you. <laughs> we feel the love. Oh, good. We, we do. <laughs> okay, school is here. Why so stressful? Uh, Suzette. Oh, gosh, so many reasons. I mean, going back and having to go from summer to now a really structured schedule again. Um, worried about tough. seeing the kids that may have given you a hard time last year. Mm -hmm. um, the idea of you're in a new grade, there may be new kids shifting from school to school. There's, puberty. there's a lot. Puberty happens in the summer, oh, too. Oh, exactly, Hormones exactly. <laughs> well, and then the, the, the poor teens who are coming back and now college is the big thing in college applications are going in oh that's really overwhelming and that starts in junior year of high school junior year the stress yeah. is it, Heather well I think the start of the school year is also very exciting and as someone who still works in an academic world I always love that process of buying my new school supplies or setting up the new folders or the new dividers in my notebook and anticipating but with that anticipation can be mixed in all of those other things that can be very frightening or very overwhelming, or at least put a damper on things. And I think for children, going back to school can have a lot of stress hidden in it. And as adults, we tend to look back at the lazy days of summer and those beginning True. days of school and think, oh, life was so easy then. I didn't know how great I had it. Think about the stresses on us now as adults, True. mortgages, the economy, significant relationships. And we think, well, it can't be so bad. And we tend to miss the mark. We tend to underestimate. Sure. So Minimize it. It's a complicated time for children, but it's a time parents can help children navigate well, and it's a time that children can learn a lot that will carry them through their life going forward. But also what you said, it was exciting. We're going to be talking about how we can help kids navigate the stresses and the strains of starting a new school year when we return here on Healthline. Hi, are you a member of Facebook? You know, I am, because I like to know all that my friends and family are doing. Wait, did you know that Healthline has its very own Facebook page? All you got to do is go to Facebook, type in Healthline, find us, click like, and become part of the conversation about health, lifestyle, and the community. We post links, health tips, suggestions from you, the community, about what you do to lose weight, de-stress, have a happy, healthy lifestyle. Okay, once again, all you gotta do is go to Facebook, type in Healthline, and become part of the conversation. Hold on. Okay, somebody just posted that if you drink an eight ounce glass of warm water with lemon, it starts to invigorate your metabolism. Oh, along with jumping up and down for 60 seconds first thing in the morning. Okay, you know what? I've gotta pass this on. Become part of the Healthline conversation. We will see you on Facebook. 
Welcome back to Healthline. Tonight is all about going back to school and what an exciting time. We are joined by two of our favorite guests, marriage and family therapist Suzette Bray and psychologist Heather Banus. Ladies, we, we're going to address adults and teens and youth, but what about preschoolers and kindergartners? How, how exciting and traumatic is it for them to start and leave mom and dad in home? Uh, Suzette? Well, whenever we're starting about those first times at school, starting to talk about those, we are looking at the risk of separation anxiety. Mm -hmm. And it's very, very, very important that we prepare kids for going to school. We talk about it as a really exciting thing. But also that if our child appears distressed, that we remain really calm and comfortable and don't give in to the child's pleas to leave. It's very important that we send the message that school is a really safe and fun place to be and if we get distressed by their distress we're just helping them become more distressed. Well, I also like that you said get them prepared. Heather, same thoughts? One of the ways that you can help them be prepared and this comes from personal experience is to give them something, some kind of a token, some kind of a, a, a saying that they can repeat in their head, something that they can carry with them to school that represents the parent. And so for a while my girls Love had that. a little pewter angel in their backpacks or lunch boxes, notes in the lunch box, hi I hope you're having a great day when they're old enough to be able to read that. Um, something to help them transition and feel like you're close by that they've internalized you even though they're spending time away from you. Oh, I love what that. What if they want to take a blankie or their favorite little stuffed bear? Well, you know, for preschool that's probably a, a smart thing to do, but the day will come when taking that that's ends up that becoming complicated. That's where the social and the peers start to come into it and mm -hmm. you have a blankie, you're a baby, and now we've quickly transitioned into um, kids feeling uncomfortable with what they need at school and being teased because of it. So there's a time and a place for that um, and usually children take care of that themselves. Um, when parents, for example, express concern that my child's still sucking their thumb and I say, you know, nobody goes to college sucking their thumb. Somewhere between <laughs> preschool and college, that you know, it will fade away and you don't probably have to worry about it too much because the peer pressure will take care of that. And that's one of the ways that peer pressure is actually a positive thing. It helps kids transition some of those developmental milestones. My dad just gave me money. <laughs> There's that too. Right. Um, is it necessary to send a child to preschool or uh, I've sent my girls actually to nursery school which is the same nursery school that I attended as a, mm. as a child and I thought if it was good enough for me it's good enough for them. But do kids even need two years of this preschool or even one year That's before right. they go to kindergarten? That's a tough question. I think it depends on the child. Um, but I really do think that kids tend to move forward and move ahead when they have other kids to, to learn from. Hmm. I think that's, that's one of the main reasons is for socialization as well as for having them, them see how other kids behave so that they can do the same. Well, hopefully the kids the, are behaving well. <laughs> hopefully. But then when kids are that young, and I've noticed with my, with my nephew, who's three, three years old, and he starts preschool soon. Sweet little, I love you, Alexander. Um, I see the way that he plays with other kids, and there's a little bit more demonstrative and not demonstrative. Is that where socialization starts amongst children at that age and actually being in the school setting and when you find out what works and what doesn't work? What if you have a child that is a little bit more aggressive at that age than others. How do, you, how do you teach the kid to not be that strong? Well, it'll depend in part who's doing the teaching. Okay. If the peers are doing the teaching, right, the lesson may not be as well formulated as we would like. It might be a jab back or pulling okay. a toy back, but there's a lesson in that. If the preschool or nursery school teacher is doing the teaching, there's probably a more calm sort of parting, separating, okay. talking through. And likewise, if the parent's doing it and they haven't observed it firsthand necessarily, then it's a little bit more removed. The important thing is the lesson is learned. But if you have a child who's very aggressive at that young age, you may want to um, go into the whole preschool, nursery school thing in small doses oh, okay. to prime the child to succeed in a shorter period of time, in a more contained setting, and then bring them home and let them have sort of the run, not the run amuck of the house, but the run of the house where they don't have to share with 
20 strange kids that they met the day before and now are supposed to be their friends. So it, it varies. Not every child is ready to go into you know, full-time preschool five mornings a week or five days a week. And I think you have to differentiate between um, daycare for many families that need their children cared for during the day and then nursery school. And so if you have the options and you're sending them to school for the socialization and the um, sort of pre-academic learning, that's one thing. And you may be able to shorten the time periods. If you need childcare, you need to think about that setting right. and what meets your child's needs and abilities. Well, we are actually going to um, get a little bit older in our next segment and share with you um, amazing ways to, as Suzanne said earlier, navigate through the stresses of being back in school. And also we want to address what to do on that first crush. Don't go away. Hi, I'm Dr. Banis, and I'm here with a health tip for students, parents, and all those concerned about stress. Stress comes in many shapes and sizes. It's a very individual thing. What makes one of us feel overwhelmed or worried or afraid may not do the same to someone else. But what's important is to know what is stressing you. And as the school year starts, that might have to do with what you have to learn, who's going to be your teacher, whether or not you'll have someone to sit with at lunch, whether you'll make that sports team you've been dying to make. If you want to manage your stress, the first thing to do is identify it. Then brainstorm, what can you do to make it better? Can you fix the problem with practice, like practicing those spelling words in extra time? Can you fix the problem by talking to your parents and asking their advice because they were kids once, even though it was a long time ago? So when you're thinking about the stress of the school year, think about what it is that makes you feel overwhelmed and then who can best help you manage it by doing something to beat it. Back here on Healthline, we're talking about the stresses that come with a new school year. And I've certainly experienced it with my two kids. One's going into fifth grade, but the big transition is for the seventh grader going into junior high school. At her school, they've divided the school into school one and school two. And oh, the hue and cry when she found out her best friend was in the other school. And a girl that she doesn't really want to hang out with anymore was in the same one. Well, that's just in microcosm what so many kids have been going through uh, this month is they They've been heading drama. back into drama. the classroom, the drama, the, the, and, and just managing the time, even when you know, you're not particularly uh, you know, traumatized by the transition, you still have to figure out how to get everything done. Drama. Suzette Bray, Heather Banis, how, that's just out of what Suzanne started with. Uh, how do you, if you're a young girl who's separated from your best friend going from school one to school two, how do you, how do you make that work? Heather? You can make it work. There's no doubt it can be scary. It can be very upsetting. It can feel like the end of the world. And yet, most of the time when you talk to that same girl at the end of the year, they discover they've made all sorts of new friends. They actually got to try or do things that they hadn't imagined because of those new friends and their interests, or because they were able to break out of some sort of pressures in the previous relationships. But that doesn't change it in the moment. It feels scary. Listening validating, asking if they want help. When you get to the tweens, when you get to middle school and high school, as wise and wonderful as we adults are, if we're too quick with the answers and solutions, they're quickly rejected, equally quickly rejected. Ask if they need help, how you might help, brainstorm with them. Look for your friend at lunch if that's Love possible, that. but look for another friend um, in the classes that you're in. Look for someone who looks like they need a friend and make a friend that way. The new kid. The new kid, or the kid who seems alone, or, or whoever that might be. Um, you're not the only one going through this. This may feel difficult now. It will get better. It will end by the time Christmas comes, or the, the Valentine's Day dance happens, or whatever. You'll have forgotten how you were feeling this day. Um, but then you want to monitor and make sure that they're actually making that kind of progress. Because for some children, it's tougher to navigate on their own, and they need more support from the adults in the world, in the school and at home, to help scaffold them through that process. But that's when you say that to your partner as well. And then you can also say, you know what, I see that you're sad, Drew. I see that you're sad, and it hurts me too to see you sad, right? Mm -hmm. My experience is too that often as adults we say sort of get over it or minimize it even if we say it in nice words and a nice tone 
we put down someone else's feelings because we feel inadequate as to how to help them cope with whatever that is. So then what's the flip of that? Well, the flip of that is letting it be real, letting it be articulated, helping the child to articulate it, and then saying, all right, now let's put our heads together and figure out how we're going to manage this. Love and that. one place that I see this a lot actually is when children are bullying in school, when they are bullying someone else, and a teacher or a parent or a chaperone or somebody in charge sees it and they don't know what quite to do about it. They don't know how to come down or they think, oh, I was bullied and I'm tougher because of it and I grew up and I got through it. So a lot of times we distance ourselves because we don't really know what to do about it or the problem feels too vague or too big. And so we pull back and just sort of do the get over it kind of thing. And that doesn't end up serving anybody very well. So will you, will you hold that thought? When we come back, we'll actually share with you what to do if actually somebody does bully you and if you are being the bully or what to do. And again, don't go away because we will talk to you on what to do with that first crush. More when we come back. <laughs> I'm Suzette Bray, and I have a health tip for you about what to do if you're being bullied. No one deserves to be bullied, but it's something that happens to a lot of kids. Here are some ideas about what to do. Act calm and confident, even if you don't feel that way. Ignore taunts and teasing. Bullies like to be in control of other people by making them feel angry or afraid. If you're in control of your feelings, the bully won't be. Stand up for yourself. Say no or stop it and walk away. If you do what a bully wants you to do, they're more likely to keep bothering you. Two is better than one. Make plans to walk with a friend if you think you might come across a bully, or offer to do the same for a friend if they're having bully troubles. If you give in to a bully and fight back, you might get in trouble instead of the bully. Call for help or get away fast and find an adult. It's not tattling to tell an adult you trust. They can help you make a plan for how to handle the situation. You don't have to go through this alone. Welcome back to school tonight. It's all about getting you ready for being in the new school year and what to do, what not to do, and what you do if somebody bullies you. Uh, I believe that the two most important tools you have are your feet. Walk away from a bad situation. We are joined by marriage and family therapist Suzette Bray and psychologist Heather Banus. Heather, before the break, you touched on bullying. Mm -hmm. What happens if you are at school and being bullied? Well, your feet do give you one good option. Walking right. away is certainly an option. And so much of what we know about bullying is that the response the victim gives to the bullier fuels the bullier. Fuels if the, fire. the response is tears and panic and fear and all of those kinds of things. So mm -hmm. to the extent that you can walk away and minimize that response, great. Um, that can start to feel wimpy or cowardly, that can start to feel old. There may come a time when you want to stand up, and standing up in a way that's safe and doesn't escalate things can be really valuable to end the situation and for the um, way that the person is feeling about themselves after being treated that way. So to come back with something like, is that the best you've got, really, I've heard this one better, um, I'm reminded of that scene with Steve Martin in Roxanne where he does the 90 different ways you could make fun of his nose. Sure. <laughs> and, you know, he takes all the wind out of the bully's sails, if you will. Because um, you're coming back with sort of uh, mild sarcasm, but right. like you kind of, you know, you're a little disengaged, but you're engaged enough to come you're up engaged with a comeback. And you're a saying, comeback. this didn't hurt me, but I'm not going to get back at you by hurting you. So it's kind of diffusing it right? a little it's bit. Right, it's diffusing. Okay. It's not escalating. Um, there are times, and there are certainly kids who don't feel like they have control of their own legs and feet to walk away. They need help. So finding someone um, to walk with them, to sit with them at lunch, going to someone who can help them with a little, what I call, social construction. Okay. Whether those are your parents or extended family members in um, neighborhood or community settings, and certainly school, um, you would turn to the teachers. They are the ones who see the most at school. And it's but really ha important. Isn't that tattling? I mean, don't you end up being called the tattletale if well, you go run off to the teacher? You can. You can. And there are certainly kids who get that reputation. Tattling is designed to get somebody else in trouble. Telling is designed to get help. Oh, that's great. So okay. if you go to a teacher to tell them, I'm having this problem with this kid over and over again, please help me, 
that's very different than saying Johnny, Gregory Johnny hit me. me and Suzanne did this to me and you know and just going in in a sense to get the two of you in trouble so there's a difference between telling and tattling so as I promised you when we come back we will share with you what to do when you have that first crush we'll also talk about mindfulness and time management don't go away Coming back to school is extremely exciting and also very scary. I'm going to talk to a handful of girls and we're going to discuss how extending your hand can make someone's day and life a lot better. Now, what do you say to somebody that is actually sitting alone by themselves and it looks like other people are making fun of them? Do you, do you approach them? Do you talk to them? Are you afraid to have you know, you, your cheerleaders and your friends go, why are you going over there? Or do you ignore what they say? No, I would definitely ignore what they say and Great. approach them and um, figure out how they're, um, if they're new and their interests and stuff and, you know, maybe try to talk to the other people that are making fun of them and, you know, just tell them, hey, you know, give them a break. They're new here, you don't know them, so you should not make fun of them. Paulina, same thing? Yeah, I would definitely tell the people that are making fun of them or people are insecure about stuff or even if they're new, they're in a different place, so you should back off and let them do their thing and be friendly, show them around. What do you say to the new student that doesn't have any friends? How do you approach that, Paulina? Probably I would tell them to get involved. Great. They mm -hmm. will, they'll meet new people if you get involved, join clubs, join ASB. If you're a freshman, you can run the second week of school or just try to talk to as many people as you can. And even if they're shy, I would go up to them and involve them and take them to my friends, my group of people that I hang out with. Same thing with you? Yeah, I, I like to um, bring them to my friends and until they find their own group of friends to hang out with because they might like, like other people. But they could also end up being one of your best yeah, friends. Yeah, of course. You, you too, Erica? Yes, I would introduce them to all my friends and show them around school clubs and join the cheer team if they want to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, same thing with you? Yeah, same thing. And I'd probably try to maybe walk them to class once in a Fantastic. while. And then if I know anyone in their classes, I'd be like, hey, you know this new student? I know he's in your class. Why don't you try maybe talking to him or her and getting to know them? I know you would probably like to be friends with them. Because you know the, the most important time of our lives is now, your lives is now. Yes. And one thing that I think most people need to realize that at your ages is, is that if it's scary and tough in high school, there's a great um, organization now called It Gets Better. And it's for people that are afraid to be themselves. So the fact that all of you would reach out and grab someone's hand and take them with you, pass that information on. Because it may make your day better, it's gonna make your life amazing. So will all of you take this Glendale higher around campus here at Hoover because I don't know my order. Yeah, yes, definitely. Okay, great. Let's All right, go. Well, let's go. Hey everyone, it's Gregory Zarian from Healthline. When I was younger, I was bullied, made fun of, teased, caused names. I hated everything about life because I didn't understand why everyone made so much fun of myself. However, I'm older and I can look back on those times and realize it gets better. For those of you that are different, that feel like an outcast, realize that you will get older, but also realize you are special, you are amazing, and you are perfect just the way you are. For more information, go to itgetsbetter.org. You're not alone. Here on Healthline, we've been talking about de-stressing your kids with the start of the new school year, having this conversation with uh, professor at Occidental College in the School of Psychology, Dr. Heather Banus, and also Suzette Bray. She's the executive director of the Village Counseling and Wellness Center in Burbank. And it's been such a great discussion. I want to make sure that we ask you about how we can help our kids with time management, because that's that just gets so crazed. The homework piles up. The kids don't know where to start. I don't know how to help them. Where do we go from here? Suzette? Well, one of the ways we can help is we can help our kids break the homework down into manageable chunks. Great. It seems so overwhelming. And, and if we can help provide them with consequences along the way so that we're sure that they're keeping up, we can really help them out in the long run. Heather, I was, I've been talking about it for the past half hour about that first crush. And just say you tell that girl or that boy that you really like them and they reject you. How do you go on? How it's do you go on? It's a big deal. You do go on. I think, I think the primary thing is for the 
adults in that child's world to remember how big a deal it is. Great. That it is that. not just oh, a little first crush, but it is felt powerfully in the very depths of their being many times, and it feels so devastating if they get rejected. Um, and again, it's about being present and being supportive, because they will get through it and, and survive, particularly if you can remind them of that. You know, oh, I remember my first crush. Well, is that mom or dad? Is that who you married? Oh, no, 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 that was boyfriend number one, or that was, you know, and you give them perspective. But don't rush to that. Just stay with them in the moment. Be as supportive as you can. I love that. What about the practice of mindfulness and getting Crazy. through sticky situations or the rejection of uh, a first crush that doesn't reciprocate? Mindfulness is such a buzzword in the mental health field right now. We're finding that it's it's not just meditation, but mindfulness is is basically paying attention on purpose without judgment. So a really fun way to do mindfulness is to eat a piece of chocolate really mindfully unwrapping the chocolate, noticing the smell, letting it melt on your tongue. That's a lot more fun than sitting there meditating and getting mad at yourself, or I had another <laughs> thought, I had another thought. <laughs> but it's restful. You take a moment from your day and just be. And it's a really wonderful thing. It helps people out an awful lot. Now I'm thinking of chocolate. In regards <laughs> to um, school and um, activities, um, cheerleading, theater, sports, and getting involved in stuff that you really don't want to do, how do you find the right thing for you? Well, I think Because that's to, stressful. It is. It is. You have to try different things to find the right thing. But you can also be sort of systematic about it. If you like large groups, then you're probably drawn more to team sports or big clubs. If you're a smaller group, then maybe you want something that's a little more individually based than that. So I think that mindful approach of sitting back and paying attention to when am I the happiest or when am I at the greatest ease doing what I love to do What's my favorite kind of setting? If you can answer some of those Correct. questions, then that'll direct you in the directions you need to go. And if my girl says, I don't want to do Girl Scouts anymore because I've done it for seven years, or I don't want to do piano anymore because I never liked piano in the first place, we just cut them that slack. When do we insist? I think that's a tough question to answer, and I'm, I'm a mom of two Gold Award Girl Scouts, and I will say, honestly, we hung on for dear life at the end to make it all the way through from Daisies to Girl Scouts. <laughs> I do think what's important in those extracurriculars is that the kids are learning about commitment and follow True. through, but torture shouldn't be one of the lessons. If Girl Scouting or cheerleading or football or, is torturing your child, then it's probably time to give it up, but that doesn't mean you give it up for more screen time. It doesn't mean it's more computer time, Facebook time, MySpace time, phone game time. It needs to be replaced with something else because right. balance and moderation is the healthier approach. Mm -hmm. Suzette, final thought in one sentence about people and going back to school. Breathe. Perfect. <laughs> Heather, final thought? I like that thought. I, I guess I would also want to say have fun. It's a great opportunity. You said earlier, it's exciting. I, I guess I'm... I'm excited about the start of school for everybody. So it, it is a great opportunity. Enjoy. Make a the most of it. A new beginning. And, and you two are both going to be back because you're our two favorites. <laughs> so school is here, and I just want to personally say if you feel different and you feel like you have no friends, the most important thing you need to remember is that you are special and that you are a gift and that, bottom line, it's going to get better. You are not alone in this world, and you will grow up and find people that love you just for as special as you are. On behalf of myself and Suzanne Watley, kick some major butt at school and have fun, and we will see you next time.